Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. Welcome to the first video of 2021 and this video is going to be my 2020 MTs video. So all throughout 2020, I think starting at the end of January, I put away the products that I fully used through in a bag and in today's video we're going to be going through that bag I'm going to be telling you what I think about these products that I fully used whether or not I repurchased them whether or not I plan on repurchasing them or whether or not I just moved on to something else because it wasn't super impressive for me I personally love watching empties videos because I love to know what people fully use what they get their money's worth out of the products that they're buying over and over and over because that is the best indicator of what their favorite products are. If you guys are excited for this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up before you leave. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Happy 2021! I am happy to see you back, happy to be filming again, and with that said, let's go ahead and get started. I pulled my hair back because we have a lot to go through. I have kept everything in this huge Sephora bag, and I can tell you it is like halfway full. So we have a lot to go through. I usually like to organize my videos in a way that makes sense, like hair care first, body product second, makeup third. However, I don't know what order I'm going to be pulling things out in because there's a lot in here and I didn't organize it, you know? The first big thing that jumped at me were these right over here. These are the Cetaphil Moisturizing Cream. This is a very rich formula. It doesn't have any scent or anything, so I really love this one for after the shower because it's very easy to apply. It sinks right into my skin, but my skin feels very nourished and deeply hydrated after I use it because it is that nice thick cream. And I love that it doesn't have any smell because I can just layer my perfume over top of it and it'll smell however I want it to smell. I really like body moisturizers that don't smell like anything so that I can just spray my perfumes over top and it won't compete. <laughs> these were my 2020 favorites because I really love these that much and obviously I have repurchased. I have two here. I'm pretty sure I'm missing a third one that I fully emptied but I don't know where it is and even though I don't have any right now because I was using a skin fix moisturizer. I think I will repurchase these because I like these better. The second thing that jumped at me were my pharmacy makeup melters. I want them to bring this size back. This was a limited edition jumbo size. It has 6.8 ounces in here and I absolutely love this one. It took me a lot longer to get through. It's double the regular amount that you buy. And I honestly couldn't be happier. I really hope that they bring this one back. I have repurchased this one. Um, I think in my last empties videos, I probably had another couple of them. I have used <laughs> countless of these and it is my absolute favorite way of taking my makeup off. And I do have one that I'm currently using in my bathroom. Every time I run out, I repurchase these and I go through them because there's nothing better out there. I've tried other makeup melters and there's nothing that comes close to my pharmacy makeup melter that was also part of my 2020 favorites and i love them i have a couple of shampoo and conditioners that i want to mention these are from a brand called lucera they are biotin and collagen shampoo and conditioner i really loved these when i was using them they were sent to me complimentary and i love that these are free of sulfates parabens and gluten they're for thin dry hair i requested them my hair is not thin but i like to over nourish my hair sometimes which i've come to realize is a little bit of a mistake but i just love to not have to add a bunch of products i like to do my shampoo and conditioner and i want my hair to like not be tangled and like be frizz free <laughs> and so i feel like when i over moisturize my hair i get that result i would totally use these again but i didn't repurchase them because i was sent something else and i started using something else after i finished these and that was the formulate shampoo and conditioner i have another couple of these in my shower at the moment and i'm still using this shampoo and conditioner what i love about this brand is that you take a hair quiz and you can select your hair type um, how many times you wash your hair a week um, they ask you i think for your zip code so that they know like the humidity in your area it goes through a really detailed description of what you do with your hair and the results that you want to see and you can even add or take away some ingredients like i've been using mine with no silicone 
and extra moisturizing and so I really love that formulate lets you do that because you can pretty much pick exactly what you want in your shampoo and conditioner they are a subscription service and they measure the time in which you would run through your shampoo and conditioner and you would get a new one and the bottles are refillable so they're not sending you plastic bottles every time the other really cool thing about it is that you can select what scent you want your shampoo and conditioner to be which i love the one i chose smells like neroli which is one of my absolute favorite scents and i am obsessed with it so out of the two shampoo and conditioner brands i used during 2020 i stuck with formulate because i really love that it's just made specifically for me with the smell that i want so that's why i have continued using them i always get asked what i shampoo my brushes with and this year i went through a full size of this this is the equal tools makeup brush shampoo um for a deep weekly cleanse i bought this at the publix by my house and i did fully use it it worked okay i'm not going to say it's my favorite i haven't repurchased it I haven't found a like super exciting brush shampoo so products like these I go back and forth a lot it is a good one it was very affordable which I liked so I mean it's okay um, I'm not crazy about it <laughs> I have some dry shampoos here that I also went through this one is from Monet it's called studio one conditioning dry shampoo I actually really like this one I have not repurchased though and then I did also go through my living proof perfect hair day dry shampoo this one i really like it gives me a huge like white cast on my hair but after a little while i can make it go away and my hair feels truly clean and now i'm currently using the dry bar dry shampoo honestly i really like all of the ones that i've used throughout the year but i think the dry bar is definitely still my favorite i haven't fully finished mine though so i don't have it in my empties here i have an empty bag of shiseido cotton i love my shiseido cotton this is something that i purchased over and over and over again i call it the fancy cotton but i really love to fix my makeup with it take my eye makeup off with it it is so gentle it doesn't soak up your product i love it for applying essences because i don't feel like i leave all of my essence in the cotton it actually gets deposited to my face and so of course i have repurchased my fancy cotton and i will continue to do so I had a body product spill in this bag, so everything smells delicious but looks disgusting, like this looks wet right here. Um, anyways, I used a lot of sheet masks throughout the year, but I don't think I remember to put them all in this bag. One of my favorite brands to use for sheet masks is the Dr. Jart brand. I really love how hydrating these are. I like this one with the green pill, and I also really love the one that has the round blue pill i'm pretty sure i have gone through a lot of those this year but like i said i don't think i saved any others but anyways i do absolutely love my dr jart cheat masks this right here is the product that spilled in the bag because it had a teeny tiny bit left in it and this is the l'occitane shower oil i absolutely love how this smells and i absolutely love how this makes my skin feel it's an oil that you put on while you're in the shower and it cleans your body and it leaves it feeling so absolutely fantastic i haven't restocked on this yet but that is because i just finished it i will definitely be restocking on this very soon i love it i believe this is the second bottle of this i go through and it is my absolute favorite i don't use it every day i use it kind of as an additional step whenever i feel like my skin is feeling extra dry or i just want to pamper myself since we are in the subject of shower things, let me mention this to you guys. This is the Ritual of Sakura. I bought this during the Sephora sale and I already finished it. I absolutely love it. This is the best body scrub I've ever tried. It smells amazing and I love how thin the little sugar granules are. It doesn't feel scratchy. It kind of melts right into the skin. And this has oils mixed into the formula. So this is something else that makes my body feel so hydrated and nourished and it also made me fall in love with like scrubbing my body in the shower i will definitely be repurchasing this one as well um, i think they have another scent that i want to try too but i really love this formula and how hydrating and nourishing it is for my body while we are on the subject of scrubs i also used this fresh sugar strawberry exfoliating face wash in 2020 and i did really like it i'm not a huge fan of sugar exfoliators for the face 
However, this one is actually really good. The little sugar particles melt very fast and it makes your skin feel really nice. I don't love it enough that I have gone back to repurchase it. I can definitely leave without it, but that's because I don't love scrubbing my face with physical exfoliators. If you love physical exfoliators, something that you like feel the grit to, I definitely recommend this one. It's very gentle for your face and just overall very nice. I just prefer the like chemical exfoliators or the enzyme exfoliators over the physical ones, but like I said, if you like the physical exfoliators, then definitely give this one a try. I went through a couple of eye makeup remover slash micellar waters this year. This is my Hydra Life Micellar Water from Dior. I do really like this one. It is very gentle on the skin and I love that it doesn't make my skin feel tight and dry after I use it. I mainly use things like this when I'm like fixing my makeup a little bit while I'm doing it, like cleaning up underneath the eyes. It's very rare that I actually take my full face of makeup off with something like this because I do prefer a makeup melter. But for fixing little mistakes or maybe just taking an eye makeup off or something like that, I did really love this one. Also this Lancome one, this is the Bifacil Face from Lancome. I feel like they serve pretty similar purposes. This one I think has a little bit more oil in the formula, but honestly, I don't have a preference one over the other. I think they both work really nicely. And I haven't repurchased any of these because I had a Bifacil eye makeup remover and this is what I'm currently using. They also hold the same amount of products, so I feel like if I had to choose one, I would just go for whichever one is more affordable out of the two because it doesn't make a difference to me. Something else I fully finished this year from Fresh was this Black Tea Kombucha Facial Treatment Essence. This one is packed full of antioxidants. It is made out of fermented tea, I believe, which is what kombucha is. And so antioxidants help the skin fight free radicals. Free radicals age you, so therefore it is an anti-aging essence. I always feel like this one is a little bit too pricey for what it is. I'm currently using the Primera uh, Miracle Essence and so I haven't repurchased this one. I did really like it but not enough that I wanted to just stick to it. I definitely wanted to like try other things afterwards. So it was really good. I like that it's anti-aging but I did switch to something else. <laughs> All right, I have two more cleansers I went through this year. This one here is the Ordinary Squalene Cleanser. I did repurchase this one after I used it because I love how this one does not strip my skin of moisture. It actually makes my skin feel pretty hydrated after I use it. If you buy it and they have the bigger size available, I would go for the biggest size because um, it is very affordable and you get a lot more product in there. So this one is one of my favorite cleansers. I currently have my big one in my shower and I use it quite often. So I really love this one and I love how affordable it is. The other one I fully went through was this travel size of the kale, green tea and spinach vitamins cleanser. This is one of my favorite cleansers of all time. And during the Sephora sale, I went ahead and purchased the big bottle of this. So I did repurchase it and I love it. My husband is currently using the big one with me because I have it in my bathroom vanity and so he and I both use it and I really love this one I will say if you have super dry skin I feel like it's not the best for dry skin I have super dry skin and I'm still using it because I love how it smells and feels but I don't feel like it's the best one for my dry skin which is why I'm not currently using it every day but I still really like it and my husband has a little bit more oily combination skin than me so he absolutely loves it Let's get into some moisturizers. I did fully finish this Drunk Elephant Lala Retro moisturizer this year. It's not my favorite, I haven't repurchased it. This is made out of six rare African oils and they are just whipped together in there. And while I do love the idea of how nourishing that would be, I don't feel like this moisturizer sinks into my skin the way that I want it to and therefore I don't really love it and I haven't gone back to repurchase it. I think that even though I have dry skin, my favorite Drunk Elephant moisturizer is the one that is a gel formula because that one does sink into my skin and it's still pretty hydrating. This one just kind of sits on top and I really don't love it. Pharmacy sent me this complimentary quite a while back and this is their Cherry Up Brightening Vitamin C Eye Cream. 
and I didn't love this one for my under eyes but I used it as a face moisturizer because I needed to buy some moisturizer for my face and I really loved it all over the face obviously it's not ideal to buy an eye cream to put it all over your face and I did it just because I had it I wasn't using it for its intended purpose so I didn't go back to buy any more of this and now we move on to magic cream and when I tell you guys I am magic cream obsessed I'm not joking <laughs> I really truly do love it I have one um, 1.7 ounce size right here and two of the one ounce little jars I love magic cream I cannot stop raving about it this one feels very nourishing very hydrating but it also sinks into your skin magic cream has all of my favorite ingredients in it it's got hyaluronic acid it's got peptides which are anti-aging and then it also has very nourishing ingredients like rosehip oil, camellia oil, um, it has frangipani extract which helps to soften the skin in it and it is just my favorite moisturizer. After I truly got into Magic Cream, I have not been able to like go back to anything else. Um, I have used all of these back to back and I haven't used anything else in between because I know that like I haven't found anything that I would like as much yet. Maybe something will come up in the future, but as of now, I'm still stuck on my magic cream. I love it, um, and I do have another one that I'm currently using. I also went through a whole magic night cream. Magic night cream has all the same benefits that magic cream has in it, but it also has a retinol, and the consistency is pretty different. This one is super, super thick. It feels like you're putting on a mask, and I love that because it is for nighttime and in the morning I still feel like my skin is hydrated whenever I did use it. I haven't repurchased this one though. I went to something else that is a little bit more affordable. But honestly, I absolutely loved it. If you don't like thick creams, I don't recommend that you go for this one because this is the thickest cream I've ever used. But I love it. The trick to putting it on is to like warm it up on your hands and then apply it to the face. And again, it feels like a mask, but I think it's delicious. <laughs> I fully finished this Lancome Fix It Forget It setting spray or I guess I have a little bit of it left. I was trying to finish it but I don't know. It's okay. It's anti-pollution. Not my favorite. I have not repurchased it. Something else I fully finished was this Ogenist Genius Liquid Collagen. This makes my skin feel very plump and so I do really love it. I haven't repurchased it because I switched to that peptide serum from uh, Peter Thomas Roth that I'm still currently using and I love it. but. Um, I think I will at some point in the future get this one again because I really love the idea of putting collagen back in my skin and I really love the way this one feels and it makes my skin feel and look. My breakout savior, I also finished another one of these this year. This is the UFO Acne Treatment Face Oil. When I had mask me after going back to work after quarantine, I was using this one like crazy because I love that this one has salicylic acid in it which is going to kill the acne bacteria but it doesn't dry my skin out. Usually most products that have salicylic acid in them um, are very very drying to my skin. This one also has tea tree oil in it which is also really good for breakouts and so nothing bad to say about this one. I haven't repurchased it because I'm not breaking out as bad anymore but if I do I will get this again because this is my favorite thing for acne if you have dry skin. Here's the deal, I have a few products left to show you, but I have to get dressed to go to work in like 10 minutes. So I'm going to finish this video tonight. When I get back home, I have very, very little to go through left. And so you guys will see me in a second, but I'll see you in like eight hours. Finally back from work, I have had lunch and dinner today and my lipstick looks still like it's somewhat on there, which is really nice considering I was biting into sandwiches earlier. I'm finally giving these Chanel Double Ended lipsticks a try. This one is in the color Tender Beige. Of course, it'll be linked down below along with everything else that I have on my face today. And I mean, when they tell you this last, they are not kidding. It's been 10 hours since I was here filming earlier today. <laughs> I'm over here like, where else do I have to touch up? Okay, I'm done now. If you guys want to see a little makeup tutorial on this look, I did film it, but for Instagram, not for YouTube. So I will be posting how I did this um, on my Instagram account. Let's go ahead and continue. I have very few products left. Mostly makeup at this point, but I have a little bit of skincare to go through. Let's start with this eye cream here from Lancome. This is the Lancome Genifique Ux, which is the Genifique eye cream. And honestly, 
I don't love this one. It has the Genifix serum in it, which is going to be anti-aging, which is nice. But this one is just way too lightweight for me. If you have oily skin, you might really enjoy it. I definitely need a lot more moisture than what this one provides for me, so I don't love it. Then we have the Bye Bye Under Eye Eye Cream from It Cosmetics. This was a while ago that I used this one. I barely remember how it worked, but I never repurchased it. And I honestly don't think it was all that. I did not love it, so meh. Now, this one right here is definitely one of my favorite eye creams of all time. This is the Black Tea Age Delay Eye Concentrate from Fresh. I would definitely repurchase this one. The reason I didn't repurchase it was that after this one, I started using my eye cream from Charlotte Magic Eye Rescue, which I also really love. But this Black Tea Age Delay Eye Concentrate right here is amazing. One of my favorite eye creams of all time. It's super creamy, super rich, and it's anti-aging, so I love this one. And I highly recommend it. I'm a little confused, and I feel like I might have thrown things away without realizing, because I should definitely have my Magic Eye Rescue in here as well, because I do remember fully using one and finishing it but it is not here um anyways i absolutely love magic eye rescue one of my favorite eye creams as well i think though that i do like the black tea one from fresh a little more and another one that i love just as much as this black tea one from fresh is the shiseido eye cream absolutely love that one too next let's talk about eyebrow pencils and i have a few here the benefit precisely my brow one of my absolute favorite eyebrow pencils ever i do highly recommend this one it's like 25 26 dollars maybe um i did find an alternative to it that i like just as much for a lot cheaper i believe these morphe ones retail for five or six dollars and i use mine in the color java this is something else that i'm pretty sure i've gone through like more than two i definitely have one in my car so that's three and i think i've probably used a couple more that somehow didn't end up in this bag um but i've used a lot of these java eyebrow pencils from morphe this year and i absolutely love them this is the one that i'm going to continue to repurchase because it's just again five or six dollars for them and it is worth every penny the packaging is good and they last just as much as the benefit one giving you really nice precise application so definitely recommend the morphe eyebrow pencil it is my favorite another eyebrow thing i tried this year were these right over here so these are the glossier brow flicks and i have mine in two colors i have them in brown and in black the one i needed was definitely the black one however i didn't go back to repurchase these because the anastasia eyebrow pen came out when i was using these and i instantly fell in love with the anastasia eyebrow pen because it gives me a much thinner line so even though i was liking these when that one came out i realized that i like that one much better and so i did not go back to repurchase these because the anastasia one is the bomb something else i used a lot in 2020 and i ran through is the patrick ta eyebrow wax so these are the wax that i use to like lay my eyebrows back so that they look nice and fluffy and i not only purchased it a second time but i'm currently still using it and i'm about to purchase another one because mine that i'm using is about to run out as well i'm absolutely obsessed with this patrick tap brow wax anastasia did just come out with a brow wax and they launched it at qvc i ordered it and they accepted my order but now it says it's back ordered which is very annoying because i really wanted to try it but whatever um eventually i'll try the anastasia one and compare it to this one but as of right now absolutely obsessed with the patrick tap brow wax and i of course have plans on continuing to purchase this one I fully finished a foundation in 2020, which I am very proud of because I feel like foundation is one of those products that I personally never go through. I end up giving them away before I finish them. Um, and the foundation I finished was the Bounce Foundation from Beauty Blender. I absolutely love this foundation. I do currently own another one that I could use if I wanted to. This foundation is a medium buildable to full coverage. It has a natural finish. It looks very natural on the skin and it covers absolutely every imperfection that I need covered on my face. So I love it. I don't love the packaging because even though it's a nice blade and it's intended for you to wet your beauty blender in there, it's kind of annoying to get your foundation out of there 
once it starts running out and so I feel like it's pretty wasteful however I absolutely love this foundation formula I recommend it anyways I would definitely repurchase this one but I don't have to because I, because I still have another bottle left I have two eyeliners in this bag and they are both from Marc Jacobs they are the is it blacker I think it was called yes blacker eyeliner from Marc Jacobs and neither one of these is actually empty but I put it in this video because I can't use them anymore and the reason is that they dried out and so I'm not going to be repurchasing these because there's a lot of product in there and they're fully dry I cannot use these in my waterline anymore so I'm kind of disappointed in these because I love them where they were new one of my absolute favorite liners it, they were so black and so creamy but they dried down fully so I think for the moment being I'm very happy with my bedroom black eyeliner from Charlotte Tilbury that one is a wood eyeliner and you have to sharpen it and the reason that is good even though it's annoying to sharpen your pencil sometimes is because it's not going to get dried so anyways I did really like these but I'm very disappointed in the fact that they are now dry and so I have to toss them I have a very hard time throwing away mascara because I jump in between my mascaras a lot and I never determine when a mascara is dry like I always think I can get some more use out of it for some reason but <laughs> I did fully finish some mascara samples this year I have the Chanel Le Base mascara which I absolutely loved I'm not usually a huge fan of um, base products for your mascara however this one I really like because it doesn't make my lashes crunchy and so I do think it's actually beneficial rather than counterproductive I feel like when the base products for your lashes make your lashes hard the mascara looks like shit honestly um, then I also have La Volume de Chanel in a little sample size this made me discover La Volume de Chanel I'm pretty sure I've used quite a few sample sizes again I don't know things were missing this year but I've used quite a few of these and I absolutely love La Volume de Chanel I tried La Volume Revolution de Chanel too which also isn't in, in this bag for some reason um, but I do like the original La Volume de Chanel mascara better it's actually one of my favorite mascaras I've ever tried highly recommended and then I have a full fat lashes mascara here from Charlotte also in a little sample size that I took from work because I wanted to try it that one is a good mascara but I think from Charlotte Tilbury my favorite it's still legendary lashes if you've been watching my channel for a little while you know that I'm obsessed with the YSL full cover concealer and I did fully finish two concealers from YSL this year I have a number one and a number two in here and these are the Touche Clash full cover concealers from YSL I absolutely love these concealers they cover enough they are lightweight they blend out really nicely I do love the applicator with the little brush because I feel like it gives me a lot of precision and control on where I want to put my concealer this is one of my absolute favorite concealers of all time and I did repurchase I currently have some the only concealer that comes close to this one in my opinion is the Pat McGrath concealer and you do have to use a lot less of the Pat McGrath but this concealer is a bomb it looks so natural underneath the eyes it makes it so that nothing um, looks crepey under the eye they look hydrated it doesn't crease amazing and then this is now being discontinued but they did also used to have color correctors and this one right here is also a Touche Club, but it is a color corrector from YSL they no longer make these but I had some saved up because I love these so much so I'm currently still using one that I haven't run out of um, anyways this was their peach color corrector and I'm super sad that they discontinued these because I thought it was incredible and the last product of the video is actually a powder and it is this one right here this is the under eye setting powder from Pat McGrath I did fully finish mine um, I have been like scraping the edges lately just because I wanted no product to be left behind in here um, I did repurchase this one I'm about to crack open my brand new one today was the last day that I used this one I currently have it on and it is now being tossed because I don't think there's anything else I can take out of there I absolutely love this under eye setting powder it smooths out my pores it looks and feels weightless it makes my concealer not crease and it doesn't make my makeup look thicker I hate it when my makeup looks thicker 
So this is my favorite translucent powder to set my concealer with and I use it all over the center of my face and I absolutely love it. I just found a couple more things that should have been in the back. This is another little full fat lashes sample that I went through this year and this right here is a YSL The Shock Mascara in a travel size. Absolutely love YSL The Shock Mascara. If you want a mascara that is not going to transfer easily then definitely try this one because it stays on pretty good just make sure that you have an oil-based makeup remover so that you can easily take it off because if you use like a micellar water or something that is not made for like waterproof or water resistant makeup then this one is not going to come off your eyes very easily but i absolutely love the volume and length and separation that the shock mascara from ysl gives me Okay, so that is it. Those are all of the products that I fully finished during 2020. Those are my empties. A lot of those, as you saw, I absolutely love and recommend. They are my ride or die products that I purchase over and over again. I truly hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all so much and I hope to see you back in the next one. Bye.